It's the Fellowship of the Geek Show, a weekly podcast about comics, the comic book industry, and other geek pop culture. Music courtesy of Manny the Martyr. And now, on with the show! Hey there, everybody. It's the Fellowship of the Geeks podcast. My name is Thomas Chick, and joining me for this episode is Mike Marlowe. Hey, gang. Les Webster. El Woofo. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying it so Liz's dog could understand him. That's right. <laughs> What's funny is he did. He looked up over. He <laughs> <laughs> yanked his chain. <laughs> yeah, I can hear him. <laughs> That's awesome. And Liz Newman. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And Taco. <laughs> and Taco. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Special guest appearance. <laughs> Why not? He might even row, sing right? for us later. Hey, there you go. <laughs> oh, I think you find some salsa been... music right about now. <laughs> right. Boy, it's already been interesting. We just uh, haven't really begun yet. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> We're just that kind of crew. Mm. <laughs> so, how are you guys doing? Like I just said, never mind. <laughs> We're having a good time. Not as good as Taco. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't seem very happy at all. Unless that was a happy growl. I don't know. Oh, he's high on pizza crust right now. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> don't have to worry about a title anymore. But anyway. No. <laughs> oh, man. Hope everybody out there is doing okay. So what's been going on in your corner of the galaxy? Uh. (laughs) Just waiting on. He looks. (laughs) It's okay. Um. No, it's not. Okay. (laughs) Not even a little bit okay. (laughs) No, you're not. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, I have not done a lot. I will say I'm, I guess I'm getting better, too. Yay. Yeah. And, you know, I I think, I think grief's funny. It's not funny. It's not funny at all. But, um, I don't know, some days you think you're good and other days a little something stupid will come up and, you know, just set you right back to day one. But I've, um, I can watch match now without crying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's hard when you're in a good mood, right? Yeah. It, it, it's very hard. Um, but it's been kind of cool. Um, I, I can't even remember how I found out they play it in the mornings on one of the channels and they, they play it until like noon, I guess it is. So there's, there's quite a few channels and I I got upset with the news the other morning and it's like, why do I do this to myself? Mm, (laughs) Good question. (laughs) So um, I found MASH and um, I don't know, since I've started watching it, we've a lot of these guys are like, Hey, I know that guy. (laughs) <laughs> I, I I've seen um, I've seen John Ritter on there. I've seen Opie on there. Mm-hmm. Mr. Miyagi's been on there. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, wow, this is pretty cool. I I don't know if they're if if they're playing them from like episode one, two, three, four, that kind of thing, or if they're just a little sporadic. And this is Celebrity Week, but seems like every show it's like wow i know that guy too i don't know his name but i know him <laughs> yeah. so. hey on on season 11 there's the it's their the halloween episode mm-hmm. you've got george Wint and andrew dice clay oh wow okay. 
and Some given, of them are... And given that the Oscars were recently, they might be doing it on purpose. Yeah, it could be. Because I doubt they're playing them in consecutive order anyway. They usually don't. Most yeah. of the networks do that. Yeah, most. It seems yeah. like Andy Griffith they do. That's because there would be riots in the streets if they didn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd be lenient, by God. The streets of Mayberry, I'm just saying. I I think with even like a show like Andy Griffith and MASH, you can kind of get away with scrambling them up. Yeah. Because there's not a... You you can't scramble up Walking Dead. You just can't. That would be hilarious if you did. Yeah, yeah. it would be. (laughs) You, you You can't to a certain point. But, I mean, if if you're watching one episode where you've got, say... Henry Blake and and Frank Burns, and then the immediate next episode you got Sherman Potter and Winchester. You go okay, right, and then you go back <laughs> to a Burns and Blake one. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's jarring if you're watching. Yeah, a lot that's of them. true. But yeah, but but other than that, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the first three seasons you can probably play in any order, and it won't be too many, too too much of anything, and then same thing to say. Season six through the rest, right? <laughs> yeah, six through the end. Which is funny. You talk about Mash, and hey, I'm not the one that brought it Mash this time. Mm. <laughs> Interesting bit of trivia. The I, I just I had just learned here recently. The last regular episode of the show um, was the one where they they put together a time capsule. They actually bury that out there on on the lot, and it was the plan of it to be there for someone to dig up some point down, you know, some you know many years down the road or something. Mm-hmm. Come to find out, it was about a couple of months later because 20th Century Fox sold that portion of the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So. One day, Alan Alda gets a phone call as from a construction worker, and he says, "Hey, yeah, we 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 found this little we found this chest that's got all this stuff, in it. and they're like, do you want it?" And he's going, "No, I don't want it. Do you know? Do whatever you want to." You know? and, 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 he, and he says that the, the construction worker kind of sounded like he was upset that he had to keep it, <laughs> <laughs> but. But what what had happened some point down the road, and I don't know how recent this is. It's been um, some of that stuff went up the went up on auction, and someone won Radar's teddy bear for like eleven thousand dollars, and then reached, then reached out to Gary Berghoff and made arrangements so he could get the bear. Oh. So Gary, so Gary Berghoff has Radar's teddy bear. Oh, that's nice. That's sweet. I'm like, that's cool. That a, that a fan would do that. That is. Yep. But you know, sometimes I I've heard of stories of people doing that, like they they find a baseball or something, and they're like, you know, this was their first home run or something like that, and look them up and try to give it back to them and stuff. And and sometimes it's sad, especially when I watch shows like Pawn Stars and that kind of thing. A lot of times it's family that just doesn't understand what they have. You know? Mm. Just makes you wonder who has Klinger, Klinger's black dress. Huh. <laughs> Klinger does. <laughs> No, that was put in. The, that was put in the time capsule. Oh, okay. Because what, what, what? If I remember correctly, it's it's been a couple weeks since I saw the episode. They they put in Radar's teddy bear. They put in a fishing lure that was from Henry Blake. Oh. Clinger's black dress. Uh, Father McKay's boxing gloves. Hmm. Um, Winchester donated, I think it was cognac or something like that. It was it was that it was that kind of thing. So should have been had, a can of oysters. 
<laughs> like you tried to do for that Christmas episode. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought that was when I heard about that. I thought, I thought, first of all, it's funny that yeah. you know, they, that 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 they thought it was going to be just you know be there until fifty or sixty years down the road, but it's only a couple of months. And then the story, <laughs> then, then then the story of uh, someone winning the the teddy bear and and, and making arrangements so Gary could have it. I thought that you now that's that was cool. I, that is pretty cool. So yeah. So there's my contribute uh, contribution to Mash oh. for the week. For, for the week. <laughs> I've, I've had fun catching up on it. And I think I've mentioned it one other time here before, but um, <coughs> I haven't looked for it recently. But on Saturdays and Sundays, starting at like 8 o'clock our time, um, they start with 66 Batman. And then they go into Linda Carter's Wonder Woman. And then they or no, I'm sorry. They do Batman, Superman, then Wonder Woman. And it's like every Saturday, Sunday morning. And then when they're done with the superheroes, because they have the superheroes mornings. But then um, when they're done with the superheroes, I think it's. um, Oh, God. What is the name of that show? Jared's doing it now, but it was Chuck Norris. Oh, Walker, Texas Uh, Ranger. Yes, Walker, Texas Ranger. They play that for the rest of the afternoon. But I'm wanting to say, um, in the past, I had looked for the channel after I had watched, like, Superman and that kind of stuff, and it wasn't there. So I think it's kind of a thing, like, half the day it's this channel, and they switch over, and it's, which is really freaking stupid if you ask me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but for some reason, that's the way they do this. But, uh, yeah, so that's, that's also been kind of fun watching, you know, the older Superman and stuff. Um, we had watched all of them because I think, did we cover Superman not too long ago? I think it was the movie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we talked about Superman stuff recently, I think. Yeah, yeah what was the, the Ben Affleck movie? Went up on Hollywood oh, or Hollywood land. Oh, yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I guess. And then, and then sometimes you feel bad because you're sitting there and you're enjoying what you're watching. And it's like, man, he hated doing this. <laughs> he so hated doing this. And you're sitting here laughing and enjoying it, you know, but. What he hated, you know. he, he hated doing the. Are you talking about George Reeves hating doing Superman or doing you know, Superman? Bennett? Okay. Yeah. I was yeah, about to George, say this bit. George despised it. Yeah. Yeah. And you can uh, tell after he had his accident because before you Superman flew in everywhere. And then it's like after his accident, you could tell because they had a certain fly shot that they used all the time, which, hey, budgeting, that works. But instead of watching him fly off like you normally do, you would just see the jump, and that was it. And it's like, yeah, this this must have been after the accident, and he was like, uh-uh. <laughs> we ain't playing that. So, mm. but, yeah. So that's kind of cool. I, I think it's called Heroes and Icons. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have... Yeah. Direct TV, I think it is, or AT and T, or something like that. But it's like I said, it's pretty, it's pretty cool if you like those kind of shows. Yeah, they, you know, they actually broadcast that one um, for antenna. So they, Do they? Yeah, I can pick it up on my antenna. Oh wow! Let's see, that's even Local. better. So locally, do they switch formats over in the middle of the day too, or? Oh, I mean, I'm sure they do the same. Whatever this, I mean, sure, it's, I'm sure it's the same programming. Whatever it is, yeah, I don't pay that much attention to it. I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV in the middle of the day, so I don't know. But <laughs> I don't imagine it's any different. That's how I start my weekend mornings with my superheroes. 
There you go. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. I start mine. Um, uh, producing a podcast, so you know, mm. I don't have as much time to watch <laughs> Superman on TV. <laughs> Oh man, you've been taking guilt classes from my mother, haven't you? Mm, uh, uh, well, you know, there might have been a common teacher back in the in the day somewhere. Who knows? It's possible. No, do not feel guilty about watching TV on Saturday mornings. It's totally fine. Uh, yeah, because I don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, Eat your Fruit Loops I've and watch find... cartoons. It don't matter. It's all good. Yeah. I've been trying to find something to watch, like to really get into and watch. And it's like, I just, I don't know. I guess I'm not there yet. Because <laughs> a lot of good things have come out. Um, I've heard really good things about The Last of Us. And I've been mm. holding off on that one because the video game just like wrecked me. So, <laughs> In a good way or sure a bad way? I'm to see that live action. Yes. Huh? In a good way it's, or in a bad way? It it's emotion porn. It it okay. they it really grabs your heart and it it it's kind of uh, I can't say too much without spoilers, but it that's what we're known for, though. <laughs> right. True story. It it, it kind of shows you the links that someone will go to for people that they love, you know, yeah. and it, so it it, it it's kind of hard in spots. But um, I, I I guess the video game did come out after The Walking Dead, but the way that they handle their zombies are kind of different yeah. than zombies. It, it, it's kind of weird. I don't. They don't even call them zombies. It's some other. I can't even remember. It's been so long now. So I'm. You know. It, it's basically it's a zombie movie, but it's not a zombie. Movie. <laughs> Right, it's zombie adjacent. It, right. So I've been wanting to watch that, but haven't done it. I haven't started the Mandalorian new season yet. I don't know why I'm waiting on that, but because you're waiting for the book of Boba Fett. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I'm. I'm sure once I sleep for like a good solid week, my focus will come back. <laughs> it just hasn't been there. <laughs> you gotta stop lobbing these softballs up like this, Liz. Come on, we're hitting. We're really hitting the, the rule of fifteen hard here. <laughs> right. <sighs> yeah, that, that's basically me. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know. Yeah, tw- twenty minutes of of ramblings. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, getting, getting back know. to normal. See, that's a step in the I'm right direction already. <laughs> Absolutely, the fuck is normal anyway? But You're right. I digress. <laughs> Screw normal. Normal is boring. Normal is bullshit. Yeah. Normal is somebody else's bullshit idea of how we're supposed to act. Exactly. Anyway. I digress. Mm. <laughs> I guess I guess I should run with my digression and, and talk about something. Yeah, now. take oh. it and run. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually, for a little while, had been struggling to kind of <coughs> buckle down and watch stuff um, because I'd been having some sleep issues. Um, I'm not going to say they're fixed because they're not, but. Uh, it has balanced out a little bit, so I actually can manage to watch stuff. Um, so I watched an interesting documentary on Tubi this past week. Um, it is it's from 2019, and it is called Inmate Number One: The Rise of Danny Trejo. Um, huh. Yep, and it is as a documentary, it's actually really good. Um, and his story is also really interesting. Um, it is, it's one of those stories that doesn't start off happy, (laughs) not by a long shot. Um, but it's kind of the story of a guy who had to fuck up really bad 
in order to kind of find where he was supposed to be. Um, and I mean, it, it's, I mean, obviously that there's, this is a, there's a whole documentary about it. I mean, he, he went to prison early in his life. Um, and kind of that was indirectly kind of a wake up call for him. It, 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 he kind of didn't fit. He, he had the wake up call like in prison and didn't realize it was a wake up call until he got out. Yeah. Sort of thing. Um, Cause people are complicated and that's how things happen. Um, but yeah. And so, and then he managed also when he kind of realized what he needed to do, he started doing it. And because of that got super duper lucky and ended up a movie star. I mean, who the hell doesn't love that kind of story, right? Uh-huh. Um, right. And it's... And um, the best part uh-huh. that he does now... <laughs> what? He does a lot of... Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Not just animal rescue, but pit bull rescue. There's a lot of coughing, too. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I swallowed my drink wrong. You think after all these years you'd be better at that? Drinking. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, he does a lot of pit bull rescue. Cool. Yep. He's he's done people rescue over the years too. I mean, that was what he ended up getting into when he got out of prison. Was he became a drug counselor? He rescued people. He yeah. also still to this day, well, as of 2019 when this was done, I'm pretty sure he's still doing it um but he goes and talks in prisons basically whenever he gets an opportunity to i mean just to to try to help as many people as he can to not be what he almost became because the deal was part of the part of the epiphany was that he had his the guy he idolized when he was a kid was his uncle who went the other direction and his life just spiraled out of control and he ended up ODing. Damn. Yeah, I mean, in and out of prison and then died of an overdose. So, yeah. Uh, wake up call. That would so be. He kind of got his shit together and and then got, like I said, got really lucky and got brought in as basically the sparring partner. That, I mean, because the deal was that he had he had studied boxing when he was a kid too and and took that into prison and just be, because of that became a badass in prison um so he, he got hired to i don't remember the name of the movie off the top of my head but it, it was a basically a movie about prison boxing and it was some who the hell was it it was a movie star i can't john voight maybe i don't remember exactly um he basically his first role was the guy who the star of the movie beats the hell out of in this boxing match and so then he became like a boxing coach for hollywood movies and then was i mean where the title of the um documentary comes from is i mean he was credited a lot of times as like inmate number one or cholo number two or whatever yeah it was several years before he got a part with an with an actual name (laughs) which they bring up which was funny kind of a funny story on that and then and uh and then later on gets to finally in his 60s gets to finally become an actual hero an action hero with the machete movies which, by the way, if you have not seen the Machete movies, they are good. <laughs> they are exactly what you want in an action movie. It is just dumb fun. He does. He he makes a really good action hero, surprisingly, especially for as old a guy as he was when those were made. Yeah. But yeah he was a, also a um, Rico cop on Sons of Anarchy. There you go. Yeah, he's another one of those guys who pretty much won't turn down a role. Yeah. But and I mean he even talks about that, I mean, in this thing. He's like, Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna work. <laughs> I don't care. 
He's, well, he's in rescue. That shit's expensive. Right. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> he's got dogs to take care of, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They're showing. They, they, he's got half the time in these scenes. The scenes they're showing him outside. He's, there's a dog there. At least one. Yeah. Yeah. He's got beautiful dogs. He's got a beautiful car, too. Holy cow. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's got a collection of cars, doesn't he? Uh, he might. I don't know. They, 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 only, they only showed the one. He showed him driving around in one of them. It was a yeah. Very pretty car. Very very nicely restored. Um, but yeah, it's a really good documentary. And they talked to they yeah. talked to some interesting people in, this, in it too. I mean, including some of his family members. They help out, but some hmm. some fun interviews and kind of held a story, a really nice story. I like him. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. What was his best movie? Oh, good Lord. He's been in hundreds of movies. Yeah. The first thing that comes to my mind, though, when I think of him is, um, oh, Jesus, the Quentin Tarantino vampire movie. Oh, from Dust Till Dawn? Yeah. 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 Yep, he's in that. And of course, you know, Sons of Anarchy. If you ask him, he would probably talk about one of the movies he was in with De Niro. Honestly, he had, he was, he, it was, he had pretty, he had a pretty big fanboy crush on De Niro because he'd been in a couple of movies <laughs> with him and had gotten to just sit and talk with the guy, you know? That's cool. Yeah, he's one of those actors, I guess, from not turning down a role, that he's been in a little bit of everything, you know, mm. even if it's just a little bit shot, because he has that face that you, you know it's him when you see him, oh, you yeah. know, so. But yep. he'd also, you know, it, tying in with his rescue work, there's a show on TV called um, Pitbulls and Parolees. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, a lot of times if you will just give these guys something to love and take care of, you know, they can turn it around and do better because now they're doing it better for someone else. Right, and, they have a purpose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he, he got really involved in getting dogs into, you know, the prison system and stuff, which is a lot harder than it sounds. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So much red tape, especially when you're talking about pit bulls. But if you think about it, it's like two of the unwanted breeds, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yep. I'm not putting people down, but you, you know what uh, I mean. It's kind of a perfect fit. It is, you know? Kind of outcasts, both of them. And if it helps, why not, you know? Mm-hmm. Sure. So, yeah, I, I, I commend anyone who does that because it's, it's hard work. Especially, you know, someone who doesn't have to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess nobody has to do it, but you know what I mean. He's right. he's got enough money where he could pay somebody to do that, but but that's not his style. Mm. This is a lot for someone who gets their hands dirty. Mm-hmm. And what did you say that was on? It's on Tubi. On Tubi. Mm-hmm. I'll have to watch that. But then I, I really like him. Yep. That's what I got. All righty. He's a, he is a oh. great actor. There's no doubting. He is. How about you, Les? For me, I've been watching uh, things like Perry Mason and. Uh, the new, the new show, right? Huh? The new show, right? Oh, hell no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, for less when new shows like that come along, it's just motivation for him to watch the old one. Okay. Here, here. Um, and I've been watching and trying to come up with who the songwriters are for the uh, mysteries and it's really cool to to watch something like Perry Mason or Rockford Files and try to 
come up with who the writer is. With Rockford, it's uh, Mike Post, who was very popular in the 70s and 80s. Oh, yeah, that guy was on every show. Yeah. So it's just been fun to listen to each of the theme songs because they're distinctive, very distinctive. I don't know anybody under the age of, well, careful. (laughs) I'm going to say 40 Uh that doesn't know the theme song to Perry Mason or Peter Gunn or 77 Sunset Strip. Things like that. Mm. The Untouchables. And these are all TV shows that were in the late 50s, early 60s. So it it's a, uh, it's fun for me to try to track down some of this stuff. And I've tried doing that as well as do our uh, – homework for our podcast Mm -hmm. okay cool yep there's there's a lot of distinctive stuff coming from there from from our tv shows you can get that like you said i mean and i think a lot of it you talk about 40 40 year olds um i think the deal is a lot of them saw and or heard those theme songs in reruns when they were growing up I mean, that's where I would have heard most of those that you're talking about. Yeah. I'm yeah. a little more than 40, but. Uh, Dragnet. Uh-huh. Everybody knows Dragnet. Of course, there was a movie made. So that may be some of the reasoning. Did you mean the 1980s movie with Dan Aykroyd? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah the might... 50s version, nobody would would know about that might have refreshed our memories a little bit i mean even yeah like i said i mean i would have seen dragnet reruns as a kid on tv yeah well it wouldn't have been yeah. a favorite probably but i would have seen them or heard, and heard the music yeah that that's understandable yeah and my brain locks things like that away for future use for some reason <laughs> i'm it's what one of the things that makes me weird but not unique, just weird. Same here, though. <laughs> Anything else? No, that, that's pretty much it for me. Okay. Uh, well, for me, I've, I've noticed that I've been spending more time on YouTube. Uh <laughs> Which is a good or a bad thing. Uh, a little easy, bit of both. It's easy to lose hours in YouTube. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, I have come across one channel, and I'm not sure how it, it showed up as one of my suggestions. I and mean, I'm not sure. I, I, it would be interesting to, to see the, the logarithm on that, on how, how I got to this one. But it's a pretty cool channel. And it's called Mockingbird Lane, and it's run by a woman named Marina Coates, and she has a uh, a degree in architecture. But what she does is she actually assembles assembles um, virtual walkthroughs of classic TV homes from tv or movies and and the first one that was on my suggestion was from the adams uh the, all in the family so i clicked on that and take a look at it and it, you know we're talking about a lot, like a 15 minute video or something like that and she goes through and, and, and explains how she how she does all this she, um in this case there wasn't the 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 set interiors really didn't change that much over the course of the show 
So she was able to basically put together what it would look like if you want if you actually toured the home. And she's done several of these. She's she's done All in the Family, which is like one of her more recent. She's done The Munsters. She's done Dick Van Dyke. She did Bob Newhart, which was really cool. At, at, and when I'm talking about the, the the 70s show, but what was really cool when when at the at the end when you do like a complete uh, tour, she she set it up to where once you go through this doorway after seeing everything, next thing you know you're in the end from. The New Heart Show. Oh, that's cool. I like that was cool that she did that. But you know, I've 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 watched all of those. I actually watched one for the Waltons this morning. Uh, you know, Bewitched, um, the Jeffersons, and 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 thing and what she'll what she'll do like say Bewitched, she's like the house has changed so much over the course of the series. Even one point where the kitchen toward the end of the series was a new kitchen. So she would pick a particular season and, and she'll tell you, okay, this is this is the way the house looked at in this season. And it it's it's really it, it's really kind of an interesting um interesting to kind of see that and 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 she'll talk about some discrepancies and some some of you know i some of this i hadn't i knew but some of this i did not it's amazing how when you watch a show a perfect example is the brady bunch you see the exterior of the house that's how most of the episodes open is the picture outside of the house then you go inside, and if you if you think about it, when you're watching the show, it's like this set does not work in the exterior house. <laughs> Bewitch is another one, and and she'll actually she'll actually go through that. She'll go, okay, it, here's here's how the house looks when you look outside, but in in the case with Bewitch. The Darren's den is actually it's 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 kind of there, there's like a um it's not a square room there's actually it's 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 kind of off a little bit and it's like well so it, it can't it, it, you go back and look at the the exterior and like there's no way this would work and 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 she also mentioned that for adam the all in the family i don't know why i keep wanting to say adam family <laughs> but, but all in the family and i was it's because you, you you know you watch the you watch the opening credits and it it shows you what is supposedly the bunker's house but once you go on and, and you see this, even from the from the fr- from the front porch, the set of the front porch, and then go into the house, it's like there's no way, there is no way this would work. The, these are two different buildings, and yeah, you, if you real think about that, yeah, yeah, I mean that makes sense. But is it? But it's kind of funny how it's almost like all of them, all the shows did that. It's like there's no way. Exteriors match match the interiors, and and with like I think was the Brady Bunch, she's like, okay, she she put she put all the rooms all together and said this is what the house would look like if it was actually based off the set, and and you see it and you're going okay yeah that's a weird looking. <laughs> But it's kind of fun watching it, and, and you could tell she's enjoying putting these together. And these are really well done videos. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes for you to ch- check check it out. But um, it's been kind of fun watching these. It really is. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that is. 
in a similar vein, I watched some programming about malls and various places that have now gone uh, to the to to destruction. Mm-hmm. It's that's an interesting thing too to to notice how this mall was thriving and then all of a sudden it just became nothing and abandoned. Yeah. So I think while you were speaking and saying the Adams family, I think you were probably thinking about the name of the site. You said it was 1313 Mockingbird. Mockingbird Lane, it's, yeah. That was, yeah. That was the but Munsters that's, that's address. Munsters, though. Yeah. And she did the Munsters. Ah, okay. Which, which she, I, I, I don't know. She may have done the Adams Family. I, I haven't seen that, but I have watched the Munsters. And I never realized there was one room that was never shown on the entire, the entire series. Because she... Because she she starts off with like a floor plan. She's in, you know, if if you're standing like at the door, there's a room to the right that you never ever ever saw. Because to the left would be would be the, the the living room, and then if you start walking toward the back, there's the the entrance to Grandpa's dungeon. And then there's the kitchen, and then, of course, you, you kind of come around, and then there's the stairs where you can go upstairs. And, of course, there's spot, and, of course, she includes spots, uh, room downstairs, and, and, and access on the, the steps. You had to. Absolutely. And then, and then upstairs on um, uh, where everybody's bedrooms are. Bedrooms, yeah. Yeah, which is it's funny, and she'll point this out too. She'll because it's like Grandpa's room also doubled doubled as Eddie's bedroom. You just change you just change out the furniture and all that kind of stuff. She'll do she does she does that a lot, which of course it makes sense because these are sets. Hmm. Duh, but it's kind of that's kind of cool information. Yeah. Which, it, it, but, it, but it was kind of funny when you see Grandpa's bedroom. I was like, why is there a window in there? <laughs> why? You know, that would not be a good thing for in the morning, you know, with the sun coming up. <laughs> there mm. should be a window. A lot of new design. But... It's 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 fun and interesting, and like I said, you could you can see that she enjoys doing this because she enjoys the shows. But it is it, but it is interesting to show how the houses the the rooms change, and the, the one for Bob, Bob Newhart. I mean, she's like she talks about the, some of the pictures that are that are on the wall she's like those literally change from episode to episode <laughs> and and she and she documents it. it's like episode one here's all these pictures mm-hmm. episode two these it's an entirely different group of pictures and in episode three it's the original picture from episode one and then obviously that's due to how things were filmed i you know and once again duh but mm-hmm. still, it's, it's like, you know, once again, it's that whole continuity con- uh, uh, and, and all that. It's just, it's just kind of, it's, it's fun. Right. And this is a natural progression for the stuff you've been talking about the last few weeks about how you're watching TV shows and spotting details. Like yeah. That. So this, this whole thing is just YouTube. The algorithm is, has, has got you pegged, man, is what I'm saying, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
but it's 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 been really cool and mm-hmm. like i said she you could tell there's a lot of love and care and 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 in and, and her doing these and it's it's a really it's a it's a it's a nice channel she even goes so far to do do videos of these houses at Christmas time, so she got them des- de- uh, decorated up for Christmas. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. So. Cool. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get into today's discussion. This should be fun. This marks the fortieth fortieth anniversary. Mm-hmm. Of of a, f- a film that I remember originally watching in the late eighties, um, and that at this time I did not know. Uh, I was not really familiar with the name Ray Bradbury, but I, that would soon change after after this film. Uh, it surprised me. I don't remember knowing this back then. I, I may have overlooked it, but this was a Disney film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something yeah. Wicked This Way Comes. So let's talk a little bit about this. This is one of the early Jonathan Price films, and I remember being – what is the word? Creeped out? Well <laughs> – Enthralled. In, 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 enthralled. That was what I was actually going to lead to. <laughs> I was like, oh man, he's good. He does creepy so well. He really does. Anyway, Creep, we're jumping the gun yeah. here. <laughs> Cre- creepy, cre- creepy bad guys and all that. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. man, he's one, he's, one, he's right up there at one of the best. We're, you know, I know, Mikey, I know you hate lists. We may have to do a list like that of one of those, those 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 actors that you just know you just know him as being he always plays the bad guy and just who are the best we're gonna have to do that at some point okay yeah. that would that would be fun the, the the guys you just love to hate because they're so good at being evil that mm-hmm. could be fun mm-hmm, mm-hmm. maybe we maybe we won't do a list as in numbering them, but just come up a list because oh, I know yeah. you. You want you I, want to? Sell, well, I wouldn't say hate, but yeah, you want to sell this to me? Um, sell it in the terms of being something like a casting call. Okay. Just come up with a murderer's row of X number of bad guys. The anti expendables. Yeah. So of being all good guys, action heroes, that they're all they're all villains. Yeah. We can we can do that. I got my homework. There you go. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's talk something wicked this way comes. Les, why don't you start off? Because I, I, you've you've mentioned it on the podcast before how you've always read the story every October. Well, thanks. Uh, yes, I want to thank you for including this because it, to me it's one of the better. Bradbury stories, novels. Most of his stories were either short stories or uh, just ideas. He was involved with this one as the writer of the screenplay. And he held to his book quite well there were some differences but for the movie itself I think it gave the uh, the jitter factor enough that it was it was well to me it was well done there were a couple of scenes that uh, made the book come to life. The the characters were pretty much following the his uh, his book. And if you get the chance, I'm going to say it now, and I'll probably repeat it. 
find a copy of the book and read it. It's a quick read, but it is pretty fascinating as to how he created this world. Uh, the acting was, was, was really good, especially with Jason Robards playing Charles, the father of Will. You didn't get to see much of Diane Lane in this one, who was the mother of Jim. Diane Ladd. Who? Diane Ladd. Well, was it Ladd? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I'm, it's unfortunate that you did not get to see much of her. And they kind of fleshed out her character from the change, uh, for a change from the movie. Um, the circus with Cougar and Dark, I thought was pretty well established. Uh, although I have yet to find out how the train carrying the circus stopped in the middle of a field with no tracks around. <laughs> Yeah, we're able to stop and unload the the festivities there. It's magic. Yeah. The train from hell. I, I'm going to hand it off now because I'll come back later and talk about the differences in the book and the movie because it was there were some major differences too opening scene when they showed the train I had to stop the movie and make sure I was watching the right one and not that one we watched on Halloween <laughs> you thought sure this was the Express holy cow yeah. I was wow. like damn it <laughs> good memory that is a that, that is a different movie <laughs> yeah. I, had, I, I checked the title to make sure okay. um this was I, I liked this one. Um, when I was a kid in I guess it was eighties, Disney used to do um programmings in the evening. It was usually two hours and they'd have different sponsors, but for years it seemed like Mutual of Omaha, The Rock, was the main sponsor of it. But this was one of the movies they had played then. And um, the wonderful world of Disney. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Or no, I think it was the magical world of Disney oh, yeah. back yeah. then. One of those. <laughs> Something. Same difference. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I always liked it better when they went with movies because a lot of times you'd get, you know, what Disney was, was animation. But things like this or The Watcher in the Woods and. And that kind of stuff always stood out to me more, I guess, because it wasn't a cartoon that we were watching. And I, I watching, I, I don't remember as a kid, but I kind of caught it now as an adult um, rewatching this. The music in it, I, I couldn't find who did the score, but it has to be the same guy who does Star Wars Superman. <laughs> Is that not the song <laughs> all the way through this movie? The, the opening song, yes. It okay. sounded a lot like Star Wars. Yeah, the, a guy, lot. the guy who scored James, this movie was James Horner. Yeah. James Horner, okay. Uh, and he was the guy who scored Star Trek Two, if I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Right around the same time, actually. Yes. I mean, he did a bunch of stuff. He was a well-regarded composer, but... Okay. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it really ran Superman, <laughs> but that was cool. A little bit, you know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And I don't know. I I, I think the the dad in this movie kind of really hit home. Um, it kind of shows the the link that a parent will go through for his child. I mean, it, it think think about this. 
eight. Spoiler, spoilers here. <laughs> but, we always spoil. Um, it's a forty-year-old movie. He, in the library, he pretty much killed, you know, let him experience death, and that was supposed to be like the ultimate way that he could he could hit this guy. But he was okay, and he survived that. And really, we find out that that wasn't the ultimate way to hit this guy, and it was actually his kid. And to me, that was just kind of like, oh, (laughs) (laughs) you know, (laughs) and to have that regret, you know, the, the story that he told of the kid being drugged to the middle of the lake. And he was like, there was there was nothing I could do because he couldn't swim. And, you know, as a parent, you you understand because well you. I mean, I would have drowned in the lake with my kid, but anyways, Mm. you know, you kind of understand that sometimes you're limited. You see your kid drowning and you know you can't help because you're limited in what you can do, you know, and that was something that the what ifs could have, should have sound like it, it ate him almost as bad as him thinking about dying, you know? Mm. So I thought that was kind of. I don't know if I just read more into the the parent relationship there, or, you know, the dad thing, but I thought that was really sweet. And you know that that's kind of the way I guess every parent is. You can do whatever you want to me, you know, but you mess with my kid and it's on. <laughs> <laughs> and I um. I was trying to, I was going to ask you guys before show, but, um, not, not the bar guy, but I guess he was a store owner with the beard that wanted to experience love. And so, you know, they showed him dancing with all the girls and everything else. And then he turned into a kid. Mm -hmm. Who was he? He looked so familiar and I couldn't place his face and I could never catch his name in the movie. To go back and actually like look and see who that guy was, but he just looked really, really, really familiar. <laughs> well, the, the barber was the man that said that he loved women, loved women, and he yes. could, he could date whoever he wanted type deal. The man that was there for money was the cigar store owner. Is that who you're talking about? This would have been the barber. Yeah, the barber, I think, is who she's she's talking about. But yeah, I can... Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Then again, I had another thing that I missed in this movie, We'll get to that. I I think they played up hiding who he was with the big beard and stuff, but I think that was meant for effect for whenever he became younger again. But I'm wanting to say, which why I, I thought maybe you guys would know, is that um, Richard Davos? He was in East of Eden with James Dean. Which is the only reason I know that. <laughs> but I'm thinking he... No. Okay. Maybe it was then. I just answered myself. Do you guys like that? You caught the whole conversation I just had with myself. <laughs> uh, welcome to our pre and post show conversations, folks. <laughs> At least one example. <laughs> when you say he got younger now you're talking about the the barber Mr. Cougar is the one that got rever- uh, got changed to Mr. To a boy okay yeah, well, oh and he was the carny though wasn't he yeah he yeah. came with the yeah. carnival but yeah okay. the, the, the guy there was yeah the, the, the barber I think was the one who um, with the showgirls. Yeah, had the dancing yeah. women and all that. Yeah. 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 So, to me, uh, it kind of uh, read like Stephen King's um, Needful Things. 
kind of? Well, that <laughs> something wicked this way comes was the inspiration for Needful Things. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, Bradbury would have inspired King, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, this was, what, 40, I, I think I said, we saw 48 was when this story was originally written. Yes. Oh, wow. It was yeah. in the 50s, I think. Uh, the novel was 58. The short story, Black Ferris, was 48. And the novel yeah. was basically an expansion of the short story. That's the story I've heard, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Huh. That's pretty so, cool. I didn't know that. But you, like I said, you could definitely... That makes a lot of sense, you know. Mm. I could. You could fill a lot of that story in Needful Things. I think needful things kind of compounded more on the wants and desires than this this one did. But this one here, unlike needful things, that wasn't that wasn't the story here. It was, but it wasn't the story here. Right. The story was more of these carny things. And I say that there was a crossover between this and um, Killer Clowns. Do y'all know who it was? No. I believe it was Royal Dano who did both. Yep, mm. the Royal Dano. Damn. He was the guy with the lightning rod. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And he's one of those guys. Have you ever seen someone who played their part so well that you just kind of just don't like them after that because it was like you're, you're kind of a creep, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh god yeah. <laughs> he was that guy in um, Little House in the Prairie. Really? He had a daughter. He was a single father, and he had a daughter, and he just, you know, he he wasn't the one hurting the little girl, but he just, he was an asshole, you know, so it was kind of hard for, to see that he wasn't that asshole here. He was just crazy, you know. But, yeah. Him and De Niro from Cape Fear. I hated him for years after watching that movie. <laughs> It's like, dude, you're just a creep. You played that part way too well. (laughs) Wow. Um, yeah. I, uh... I have to admit, I wasn't so sure about this movie when it came up on the schedule. I had not... I don't think I had seen it before. Um, and I... And at this point, not entirely sure why, but I mean, possibly because of the fact that it was not a success in the box office. And so I was probably a little biased by that. Um, in an 80s film. And it was the 80s and it was Disney. Yeah. And I, I, these, these things all, I mean, I was half <laughs> expecting Jason Robards to break out in the song anytime. Um, just because I just got that kind of trauma over Disney movies but um, I got and also kids I'm not that big on kids in movies either um, so there's a this this movie kind of had a lot of strikes when with for me coming into it um, and I got about I don't know halfway in and it sort of just sort of it just sort of snapped into place this was a really good movie. It was really good. Um, and yes, I 100% give the credit to that to Jason Robards and Jonathan Price. They mm-hmm. both just did amazing work in this movie. It, it was just so, they were both just so good. And in the scenes where they're together, it's you can feel the tension. It's just Oh God, yeah! It's just really yeah. well done. I mean, this this movie was apparently a complete cluster in the making. I mean, if nothing else, the fact that it took them ten years to get it, or more than ten years to get it onto screen in the first place, 
I mean, it was in development hell for years. And then they finally get it done and they end up, it just, it does, it didn't, when they first screened it, it didn't do well. And so they scrapped it and re-edited it and reshot a bunch of stuff and cobbled it together. And man, I give a, I will give a lot of credit to whoever did because damn, they put together a good movie. They did. And if I'm not mistaken, they rescored it too. Dang. So, hmm. yeah. It was, so, there was a lot of money it was spent. So, so again, James Horner saves the day. But, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, I, and the thing that I am now, like, actively angry at myself for, um, the Dust Witch, I did not recognize who she was. Yeah, I know. I was, and I, I, I looked at that and I was like, wait, what? I sat yeah. there and saw, I love Pam Greer. Yeah. And I saw her through this whole movie and I didn't recognize her. Yeah, same. I, when I, when I watched this again, uh, a few weeks back, and it was like the first time I've seen it since. I mean, the eighties, I was like, I saw her name. I was like, where? I didn't where? see her name in the credits for some reason. I, I missed it. I don't know what happened. It shit like that happens to me occasionally, but I missed her name in the credits. And I, when I looked her, when I looked it up later, I was like, wait, sh- Pam Greer was in this. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, okay. And in our defense, there are a lot of veils involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get like and one makeup. clear shot at her face and she's made up to look like something else. Yeah. Even when she's not covered with a veil or a mask of some sort. She just doesn't really look that much like Pam Green. I mean, now that I know, she I'm doesn't. like, oh my God, yeah, I guess I can see it in my mind's eye a little bit. But yeah, I mean, so I'll give her credit for that too. Um, I mean, in a in a movie where she didn't really have any lines, as it were, um, she managed to portray someone else very effectively. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, this is, this turned out, this is the kind of movie that, um, I mean, you don't get many horror films aimed at children. Mm -mm. Um, This is a really good example of one. I mean, this is, this, this is a genuinely scary movie. It is. I mean, and not just in a, I mean, there's a lot of creepy in it and that's, I guess, I mean, that's the atmosphere. That's, that's part of what makes it, but. This is genuinely scary, and it's clearly aimed at kids. I mean, D- Disney's name on it, whatever. I mean, who cares? But, I mean, you've got your two main characters. Are these two, what, 10, 11-year-old boys? Yeah. yeah. I mean, sure, it's really Jason Robards and Jonathan Price who are carrying the thing, but the kids actually do a pretty good job, too. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's one well, I also thought for the 80s the um the special effects and stuff that they had was actually not that bad yeah they did I mean that. you could definitely tell it was it it rang of 80s but it really wasn't that bad well I mean they kept it simple I mean they did <clears throat> you, 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 which you, made you, it better and more do, believable I mean you, you have the carousel which is kind of one of the main focuses of the thing you only see it a couple of times and some superimposing stuff when it's spinning. It's not really yeah. that complicated, but it looks good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I mean, simple practical effects. Keep, keep, keep it simple. That is a staple of low budget horror movies. You, you keep it as simple as you can and let people imagine the bad stuff. Yeah. It's not bad. And then the fact that when they, when they change people into what they wanted, there's a price. And that is also ultimately a very creepy idea because they do some pretty creepy prices for some of those things. They do. I mean, they, they give the, the school teacher, they give her back her beauty and then take away her eyesight. She can't see it. That's that's some dark shit right there, man. That is, yeah. That's cold. 
it's one that kind of hit on all the deadly sins mm -hmm. and vanity and greed and yep you and, know. And preyed on a small town where mm -hmm. they don't have the resources to fight <laughs> something like that and yeah <laughs> And they're just chewing up. They're just basically they're just out there scaring people and feeding on their fear. Yeah. It's it's yeah. There's there's a lot of there's some. I mean, unless I'm sure you will go into this, but Bradbury is a master, straight up. Yeah. Dude knows how to write a a story, and he did it across genres. And and he has done several good movies mm -hmm. another one of my favorites is the illustrated man because that is a book of short stories but in it the character who is tattooed has the tattoos come to life to tell stories and in this one he took the innocence of children and brought them forward. And this was not a coming of age movie like we would normally expect, but essentially it was all of a sudden they knew of the way to care for their loved ones for one and how to cope with each other because one child was rebellious and one was a person who would stick to the rules. Yeah. And I personally, I can't really say anything bad about this movie. Mm. I thought it was so well done. Yeah, it was really good. I am surprised it didn't do better in the box office, honestly. I don't know what people were expecting, but this, this is a good movie. I don't know what else was showing at the time, but you made point, Mike, that it was a Disney movie. And as a result, people thought, well, Mickey, Minnie, okay, we're going to stay away from this one. Yeah. <clears throat> or it's going to be corny because it's for kids. And, and, and that's a real shame because it is a finely worked movie. Something that currently probably wouldn't do well either. If you just took it like it was. But if you thought about it and believe that if it's a Ray Bradbury story, there's something to it, then it would have done so much better. Yeah, today they're going to hire body count. Oh, by far. <laughs> Which is Which missing is... the point, honestly. I mean... I think so. It would, the, the, the whole point is... You, they can't kill people because if they kill people, they starve to death. Yeah. You want to take them right to the point of killing them, but not actually killing them. Right. You essentially want to do things to them that are worse than death. Yeah. Which I don't know that people even understand that concept anymore. Not to get all <laughs> yelling at clouds at it, but... <laughs> Yeah. There are worse things than dying. Right. And they can all get off my lawn. <laughs> hey, that's my line. <laughs> okay, let me say this. Speaking of this film, there were a couple of things. Uh, different from uh, from film to the book. Mm -hmm. 
first the beautiful woman played by uh yeah what's her name Pam Greer Pam Greer thank you in the book she was a highly ugly person she was the dust witch and she was very ugly she is one that had a a bubble that she flew in mm. and there was a, a scene where the boys were trying to outrun her she was going house to house looking for them which would have been a to me would have been a great idea mm. yeah and instead they wanted a name they wanted a face they wanted a pretty face so okay See, that the, kind of makes it more sinister to me, making her a pretty face rather than an ugly one, because it's, it's harder to be scared of a pretty face. Well, she can draw them in, that's for sure. Mm. There is also that. And there was times that she did have a pretty ugly face. Right, the make, the, some of the makeup and mask stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I, I would wonder about, what we talk about, her being in a bubble. I, my 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 first thought when you said that was, oh, two Wizard of Oz. No, no, you got to remember, it's it's like a dust bubble. Right, and it's they it also it was probably easier to replace that with the green fog thing in terms yeah. of special yeah. effects. But yeah. Anyway, the, sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, no, I was apologizing because I keep interrupting you. Oh, no, 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 that's fine. There there was a scene in the book also, about, and I'm trying to recall it, but it was a bullet-catching scene, and I, I don't recall that. Yeah, I don't remember that from the movie either. It was not in the movie. Interesting. And the fact that Charles faced Dark in the library was not in the book. They faced off at the uh, fairgrounds. Charles mm -hmm. was there with the boys trying to keep Jim from getting on the uh, merry-go-round and going forward, becoming older. Mm -hmm. That was not in the the movie, really. Interesting. Uh, they, they grabbed him before he got on, but there was some uh, few seconds. Uh, yeah. I mean, the closest you get to that was Will basically talking him out of it. Yeah. Yes, it was both Will and his dad. Yeah. That talked him out of it. Hmm. Uh, the scene in the library that I thought was so good was when they started quoting Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. I thought that was outstanding. And that was where you get... Where the title comes from. Uh, uh, by the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. And Dark said, uh, then rang the bells, both loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. Charles said, I, the wrong will fall, the right prevail, with peace on earth, God will to men. So, that back and forth was, to me, was very critical to the whole film. Which is from Macbeth, by the way. Yes. Which is not also not a happy story. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did Shakespeare ever write a happy story? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It's just they're just not the ones Midsummer. that became. Yeah, they were not the ones that yeah. everybody 
knows really well. I mean, stuff like As You Like It and, yeah, like you said, Midsummer Night's Dream. Plenty of those. Yeah, there are a couple of comedies or romantic comedies there. Mm-hmm. If, if they could have kept some of it. Now, the people that changed did not happen in the book, if I recall. They saw themselves like uh, Ed, the bartender, saw himself in the mirror with uh, both legs, both arms. Mm -hmm. But in the book, he saw himself there, but he did not change into a child with both arms and legs. And if you noticed... When Charles tossed tossed the child the football, did you notice something about that? He caught it one arm with one arm. He caught it with his left arm, just like he did when he was an adult. Mm-hmm. I did notice that. To me, that was pretty interesting. So mm-hmm. that, was, that was subtle but telling. Yeah. Yes. So I, I I don't know. Uh, Didn't well. Bradbury did several movies. Did he not do uh, Sound of Thunder? Was that not one of his? Where the people travel back in time to hunt dinosaurs? Not sure. And and as a result, when they they stepped off the path, they were told to stay on the path if you want to shoot something. And somebody Mm -hmm. stepped off the path. Yeah, it's based on his story. And I don't think he was involved because it was... I mean, the version I'm seeing is 2005, so I don't think he was around anymore, but... No, but but he wrote it, if I recall. Yeah. And when they stepped off the path, they stepped on a butterfly, which changes everything. Yeah. I remember hearing that somewhere recently. Interesting side note. uh, That movie from 2005 also bombed in the box office. Yes, it did. Um, I'm choosing to blame... The production rather than Bradbury. Well, you look at it and Disney is known to toss out bombs. <laughs> he even recently, John Carter was a bomb. Mm-hmm. But it was, to me, it was a really good movie. I just wish they had hyped it more than they did because, of course, they had an Avengers movie out or coming out or something. Mm. So that got all the attention. Yeah, literally two months later. Yeah. Yeah. I I, 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 re- I remember that because I remember being in a store and going by the toy section, and John Carter had been out for a couple of weeks, but there was actually no toys for it. But they already had stuff out for the Avengers film, which wouldn't be out for a couple of more months. So I was like, that that should tell you everything. There was no merchandising. There was no marketing or anything for John Carter. It's, you know, they didn't just, want to explain the movie to anybody. They didn't. They, they released it because they had released it, but they weren't going to do anything to actually – yeah, promote it or anything, mm. or capitalize on it, and it's a shame. Um, well, you, you talk about production. It, uh, could it be a little bit more about that? The promotes promoting. I mean, yeah, you're not going to do any kind of merchandising on uh, something wicked this way comes, but you know, maybe better marketing because it's it's a good film. I love the film. I love the look of the film, the, the the music, the acting. You know, watching watching this again, you know, several years later, 
I'm like, you know what? There's nothing about this film. I, I, I don't. What was it rated? Was this? Was this? Did they go ahead and do this R or was this PG? No, no, this was PG maybe. Okay. Because yeah, it be to be on TV back then, especially. Yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of picking. You know, the thing about I don't know PG, if before Marvel, if Disney's ever done an R-rated. Oh, sure they did. Yeah, I, I don't I don't remember off the top of my head, but 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 that's when they were doing movies as Touchstone. Right, I was gonna say they also yeah. used to do, uh, create new yeah. quote unquote studios to do that to do it a lot more than, but even with a Disney movie, there there had to have been a few. That was but, but back in back in the day, PG PG could. PG meant something different back then. It's, yeah, well, yeah, well, I mean, Logan's Run was PG, but there was nudity. Mm-hmm. So I've just been, I've, what I was what I was getting at is this. I don't want to say this is a family film, but I could see younger audiences being able to watch this and and, and enjoy this. Because it's 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 a it's a it's a it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of scary, but it's not talking down to the kids. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like some scary films meant meant for younger audience can do and does a lot. Uh, well, and a lot of it read the way a kid's nightmare would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had already mentioned Price before. This was this has got me on Jason Robards. Anytime I saw his name or saw his image, I, I, I want to watch that film because mm-hmm. I liked him in this film. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Just all around. I mean, I, I mean, I, 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 there's some. Ticky tack stuff. It's some stuff. Some stuff to be complained about, but you know, overall, it's, it doesn't really ruin my enjoyment of the film because it's a really good story, well told. The the, the, med, the money they spent to fix it obviously worked. Mm, totally. And I also loved that when the kids came to the dad and was like, "Hey, there's some crazy carny people." That we watched prove that the town crazy guy is really not crazy, but telling the truth and almost killed a guy. You know, we didn't think you'd believe you. You know, believe us. I love that the dad was like, "I would have." I mean, sounds crazy, but you know. Well, and it helped that he actually had seen some of it at that point. Yeah. By the time they did sit down with him and start talking. Mm-hmm. He had already pieced th- it all together. Yeah, Charles had already seen some of what was happening. He, yeah. he had already thrown the football, like we said, to the to the to the bartender. Well, and he didn't sell him out either. Right. Instead of you oh. know, most people would have been like, "That's my kid. What the hell do you want?" You know, I would have been. Why are you looking for my kid? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but that wasn't his style. Was the deal that was? I mean, that was character building straight up. Yeah. That was. He wasn't. He wasn't the stand up and fight guy, but that didn't mean he couldn't do what needed to be done. Yeah. And, that's, and he that's, did. And he managed to do it. And he, it, it was a redemption story for him. Yeah. Which but made being it that... a kid's movie, I loved that they sold that point home. The most crazy story these kids told. And he was like, I would have believed you, you know. Mm-hmm. Ah, he's a librarian. He. He, his his stock and trade is crazy stories. True. All libraries <laughs> full of crazy stories. Yeah. Including the apparently his the journal from forty years before from that his father had written down about the last time the carnival showed up. It's a pretty cool. I would definitely rewatch it again. Oh yeah, me too. I, would I am very glad to hear that. Definitely recommend this movie. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's the highest compliment you can give a film is that yeah, I want to I want to watch it again. Yeah, and I, I want to tell other people to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. 
which is why we do this show, by golly. Mm-hmm. People go out there and gum. watch this movie. <laughs> and also recommend that if you want to see more of like the backhanded deals that you make with the devil, Needful Things is a really good follow up to this. There you go. Double feature. There yeah. Yeah. God, I hadn't I hadn't watched that one in a long time too. God, I don't know that I've yeah, ever seen would... it, honestly. I'm not sure if I've watched it all the way through, but I know I've seen I know I've seen some of it. I love older King. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Richard Bachman days. That's what they need to make movies out of. Although I think they've covered King really well in movies. I think they have too. I don't think there's been there's no shortage of none King based movies. Mm-hmm. They're even starting to remake them. Yep. Don't think there's enough Stephen King movies out there. Try to put together a horror month of films. What do you right. ke- what What do you keep out? <laughs> oh man! Speaking That's from it. experience, uh huh. Uh-huh. I said, "Fuck that noise." Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's 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 too easy. I mean, well, it's there's so many that it's. You could do it for seven years. Yeah. And still not even be done. Yeah. Movie a day. Yeah, no, just no. Yeah. There's other more there's other things we can do. Yeah. Everybody covers the Stephen King. Not movies. a lot of plots. Just no more scarecrows, please. <laughs> Funny Aww. that you mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> No more more of those kind of scarecrows. (laughs) I still think they can they can pull it out of their ass and give us a good one. Uh Good luck with that. (laughs) I'm done waiting for it. That's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) All right. On that note, we are going to take a quick break and be back with geek news for you. And we're back. It is time for geek news for you. If you're not familiar with this, uh, what we do is we bring a few news items to the table for discussion. Uh, For this week, it's Mikey and me. Mike, would you like to go first, please? Oh, sure. Um, Mine's an easy one because I'm super excited about a an upcoming comic, um, which doesn't happen that often um, lately. Unfortunately, I don't pay as much attention to comics as I used to. Um, uh, but that said, this one is one from a little ways back. It's um, we're, get, we're we're getting a new um, story from Wild's End, uh, which was a Boom Studios book. Um, the last the last one came out in eight, in 2018. Um, and if you're not familiar with Wild's End, um, it is, um, well, I mean, I can't sum it up any better than, than this blurb here, which it's described as War of the Worlds meets Wind in the Willows. Um, it is... <laughs> based vaguely World War II time period-ish. Um, and um, all of the characters are anthropomorphic. Um, they are animals given human form. Um, they're perfectly normal people otherwise. Um, and yeah, it's it's the story. It, it began with, with, a, with an alien invasion story. And the the creatures or their ships, however you want to look at it, um, were essentially lanterns with tentacles sort of thing. Um, um, it is written by Dan Abnett, who is a longtime favorite of, of most of us on the show. Uh-huh. Um, and it's drawn by INJ Colbard, who is also kind of a favorite. Um, he's done a ton of stuff. He, um, what I know Colbard from 
mostly is his Lovecraft adaptations. Um, he will take a Lovecraft story and adapt it into a relatively short graphic novel. Um, some of them are really fantastic. Um, and the Wild's End series is also really fantastic, and I am extremely excited that it's coming back. Yeah, that's awesome. It surprised me it was 2018 with the last one, but the you know, more I think about it, I was like, yeah, that kind of sounds about right. Yeah, the first one was 2014, and there were, I think, three, I believe six-issue series. Maybe it was wow. only five. I forget, but I believe there were three in the course of four years, and then it had, they hadn't gotten back around to it until now, five years later. Yeah. But, yeah. I really, really, really enjoyed those those stories. I cool. wish I wish this article had a had a release date for it, but it does not. It just it says they're working on it, basically. I I would say probably late summer because I mean they're I mean the. The publishers are coming out with their stuff that's what's going to be released in June. So them announcing this now, I could see. Yeah, because this was this dropped like a like, week ago, so it would have been. Yeah, yeah. I would say like late summer, early out. fall. Yeah, yeah. I would buy that. That would be great. So like maybe August, September, something like that, maybe. Yeah. So we'll see. Awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. My article kind of surprised me once when it when it uh, popped up. Believe it or not, we are getting a sequel to the film Fall, which just released last year. And if you're not familiar with this film, this is the story of a, of a young woman who lost her husband the year before in a uh, mountain climbing accident. So her best friend and her climbed this 2,000 foot rickety old uh, what's the word you want? Um, Some sort of tower, isn't it? Tower, yeah. And then they get stranded up there. And that's that's the entire movie. Um, <clears throat> but yes, there will be a sequel. And the the thing that the, the thing that surpri- it's kind of surprises me. It's not because of the, the amount of money it made. I mean, this was this was a film that had five million dollar budget, made twenty two. So that's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. But the thing that the thing that apparently pushed it over for a for it to be greenlit is it's doing so well on Netflix internationally. Um, it, the, the article talks about um, it scored top ten rankings in four territories uh, in the UK. It's been the second most watched movie for two consecutive weeks. Uh, the only film that was beating it was Luther, the fallen son that starred Idris Elba. Mm-hmm. So they're going to go ahead and do a sequel. Uh, I, I, congratulations to them. I'm not sure it's one I want to watch the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have issues with height now. I, I didn't used to, but it's it's gotten worse over the years as I get older. But the whole thing of being on this freaking tower, a satellite tower or telephone tower, whatever whatever it is, that's just old and decrepit and all that. And so hey, hey let's let's climb it. Why? Because it's there. Okay, sure. (laughs) (laughs) It seems questionable, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, I guess if you're into climbing already, sure, but I'm not. 
But the, 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 the people who put this film together, their previous film was called 47 Meters Down, which is about two women who get stuck at the bottom of the ocean in a shark cage. So they Some thematic similarities you, there. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you see? Yeah, do you see a trend there? I don't know. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know. So, but hey, the, hey, the every, movie did every, well. Every, so the movie did well. The, there's 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 fans of the film. I mean, so they got they got to be happy, and I'm happy for them. Yep. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they're stepping up this quickly. That is fast. Yeah. I, I, I see what you're saying, but, you know. I wonder if they sort of had it in their back pocket half planned already or something. Possible. You know, which, it's, hey, it's, it's good possible. for them if they did, you know. Yeah. Who knows? Yep. Cool. All right. Any special shout outs or mentions this week? No, I don't think so. I mean, nothing here. Okay. Uh, well, we'll just go on to our regular shout outs. Want to thank Pop Goes the Culture Podcast Network for allowing us to be part of a great group of fellow podcasts. We recommend that you check them out. There will be a link in our show notes. We also want you to check out the fine men and women who make up Potter and family on Twitter who've been so kind enough as to spread the word of the fellowship by retweeting our links. And the best way to check them out is to do a search hashtag Potter and family, one word, just scroll through whatever catches your eye. Uh, please click on that link and download that episode. We hope you have a great time listening to them. We also want to thank Maddie the martyr for supplying music or podcast in our show notes, you'll be able to check out uh, a link that has some of their other uh, music. Thank you, guys, as always. And you, dear listener, thank you for downloading and listening to today's episode. We value your feedback. Any questions, comments, suggestions, complaints, observations, what have you, please send them our way. Our email address is email at thefellowshipwithgeeks.net. Or you can go to the website, go to the About Us tab, and there's a contact form that you can fill out. I don't believe I mentioned it earlier, but we do have a Discord that's open for everybody. Um, We do have an open invitation on our homepage. uh, In our Discord, we do have a channel specifically for your feedback, so you can post your comments there. Social media, we're on Facebook, The Fellowship of the Geeks. Uh, on Instagram, Twitter, and Hive Social, we are under at Fellowship Geeks. Please follow us there. If you want to follow our personal Twitter accounts, Mike can be found at Mikey Geek. Liz can be found, found at LN underscore Geek. Les may or may not be found at fake Les Webster and I can be found at Tom TC Geek and from wherever you download our episodes if you'd be so kind as to rate and review our show it would be greatly appreciated anything else before we say goodbye just thanks everybody thanks everybody be sure to watch and read the, the uh, previous stuff Thank you for listening. Yeah, definitely do that. Definitely do that. Thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate the support as always. Until next time, geek on, my friends. We thank you for listening to the show. Comments, suggestions, and questions can be sent to email at thefellowshipofthegeeks.net. You can follow us on Facebook at the Fellowship of the Geeks and on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks. Until next time, 